The Trevor Tysman Show back today with the 2022 Crown Line Boat Show Review. Uh, it's a nice looking boat. I'm a crownie myself, have had a Crown Line 240EX for a lot of years, and so I've got a lot to compare it to. I would love to see if there's any additions, any perks, anything that I need to be considering in another boat purchase. Uh, I think once a year I always get into this and try to figure out you know, what I do, if I could do it, what would I do, which boat, is it this, is it this. So here we go. I'm going to give you some of the perks with the Crown Lines, and I'll compare them a little bit briefly to some of the others to give you a good example of what maybe you should be considering. Number one with the 255 Surf, and let me tell you why I think you're going to want the Surf. Unless you want to buy a brand new stern drive and then get under the dash and rip out the the speedometer gauge and then go ahead and install a speed control, I would highly recommend you get the surf boat. And speed control in my family has been one of the best additions to boats that you will find. If you're tubing with kids, if you're doing anything at slow speeds, being able to maintain a speed when it's up and down and it's in that little part of the, where your boat planes. So think about it. When you're going like 16 miles an hour, your boat will plane out, unplane, plane out, unplane. 18, a little bit less, but as soon as you turn the wheel to the side or give any more friction to the hole, you're going to come back off a plane. So anytime that you're doing these types of speeds that are lower than say 22, 23 miles an hour in a big boat like this, you're always going to be dealing with coming off a plane and your hand's going to have to be on the throttle nonstop. Bar none, the installation of cruise control on my 240EX has changed the game as far as pulling tubers, skiers, any type of water sport you want to do with your little ones is way funner for the driver. You can actually be involved in the event. You don't have to be always worrying about speed. Are you killing them? You didn't pay attention for just a second. Now we're going 26. Your kid falls on her face and your wife yells at you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying it does. It's a huge perk. It's amazing to be able to set the cruise and be a part of the experience. I, I cannot stress it enough. If you are not contemplating the surf just because of the speed being able to be regulated, I think you should reconsider. In saying that, the 255 Surf is a great boat. I wish the walkway was, a, or not the walkway, I wish the deck was a little lower to the water. Uh, even in the 240EX that I have, it does sit a little bit higher above the water. I would love that thing to be closer just to help getting in and out of the boat. For more fit people, you can kind of just pull yourself onto the deck rather than even using the ladder if it's a little bit lower. But the higher you get, the harder it is for everybody. So then you just find most everybody using the ladder. That's probably my only bone to pick. I wish that it was lower, but it's not. Um, the other thing with the Surf Series, is the forward drive. And if you are a parent trying to keep your kids safe, then one big thing is I don't want my kid to fall out of the boat when we're moving. Crown Line does a good job of that. Uh, and I want them to be able to have fun. And I want to make sure that I don't cut their legs off with the prop. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, that pretty well wraps it up. Yeah. So when you're swimming behind a general stern drive, you're going to have some prop issues here and there. You know, you're always going to be telling your kid, you know, come on, don't jump down the middle. You can't, you got to jump on the edges. Standard boating procedure of all time. But you know what happened? Wake boats came around and showed the world you can, in fact, swim and not kick a prop. So this forward drive has been a really cool addition to the lineup of boating for all people. And I would imagine that stern drive boats will most likely see the wayside and that will turn into all outboard or you're using the forward facing. Just my theory, only because the people that are really worried about not kicking props are buying jet boats and wake boats. So this reverse prop is about the only answer to have any you know competition with the wake style boat in that world. So this forward facing Volvo engine hasn't really, I haven't seen any reviews or anything of it crapping out early on anyone. So I wouldn't be worried there. Uh, the only thing that I was recommended from a mechanic was that he has changed out a couple props on when someone pulls into their slip, they're going a little too deep and the prop ends up getting tangled up or having a bit of a fist fight with the lift itself. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, so I don't know whether or not that was user error or if that's easy to kind of get around, but something to think about if you're looking at that style boat. Now, the surf system in this is a tab-based system that goes down. It's not your Malibu system that you've seen teamed up with the Chaparral as well as the Cobalt boats. It is going to be a tab system that goes down. So you've got a heavy boat already in the 255. Uh, I think it's around 5,600 pounds dry weight without a full tank of gas or any gear or ballast full. So you're going to have a heavy boat able to make a pretty good wave. 
but I'm not familiar, need to take a test drive, going to take a test drive. I'll let you know when I do. I've seen a lot of videos of this wave, but I have not actually experienced it. But I do know that the Malibu surf system is most definitely a more superior system than just a straight up downward tab. I think a lot of uh, boat manufacturers have kind of utilized not only whole design, but different weight movement, movement techniques and the way you're ballasting your boat. Um, Supra, here's an example. They've made a tab that goes down and then folds across to get that smoother edge on the wave. So there's no doubt that the Malibu version of affecting the water, how it wraps off the side of your boat, is really cleans up the face of the wave. So I'm a little concerned with the crown line making the most spectacular surf wave. But let's be honest, most people are thinking that they're going to be professional surfers way more than they just are going to be enjoying the boat. So I can really keep that in mind. I think that our family would like to surf but I don't think anyone's going to become a pro and need some monster wave and the most perfect everything. Don't get me wrong. Would I like the wave to be good? Well, sure, of course. But Crown Line does offer a whole lot at a better price. The Crown Line 255 Surf Series with the 350 horsepower motor, which I would highly recommend. You have to upgrade the motor if you're going to be doing stuff like this. Don't be cheap. Don't stay on the low half. At least upgrade to the 350. Um... It comes in at about 128 so 128 129 was the price of this boat. You might be able to get more incentives or something like that, but I would generally say that's where you're at. Regals were like 170 for the LS6. Cobalts were like 296 for the 26, uh, or maybe that was a 28-foot boat. Either way, you're like substantially more money in a lot of these different brands. So to strongly consider a crown line by price point, you know, is warranted. Now... The other good perks about the crown line that I like is the tower and the double bimini. When you got a bimini going forwards and a bimini going back, you have the ability to use one at a time, which I really like. You know, sometimes it's not that hot outside. So if you're out at the lake, you might want a little bit of a shade for a napping kid, but the family that you invited out with you probably wants a little sun. They don't come out on the lake an awful lot. So when you invite people to the lake, a lot of them want to partake in what it has to offer quite a bit. They want to sit in the sun. They want to get sunburned. They want to ride around. They want to do the water sports. So, you know, you, you have to have that ability. If you've got them covered under a bimini the entire day, you know, sometimes it's just not that great when it's 68, 74 degrees outside and you got a bad day on a Saturday, but everybody already had the plans. Having a double bimini, it's a pretty good perk. Now, in the Crown Line series, the 235 on up all comes with bathrooms and the bathrooms are a pretty good perk if you have young kids. You know, I can't tell you the number of times you get in the boat, you get all the stuff lined up, you get the ice in the cooler, you get everything there. You're two hours later than you thought you were going to be. And then you pull out of the lake and you're about 15, 20 minutes in and you think you're about to throw a ski in the water. And number two, you got to, you got to go number two. Oh my goodness. So what do you do? You go back to the dock. Can you swim over the corner? You know, just swim over a little bit. The fishies will like it. <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of options that you could do other than drive all the way back to the dock, but the bathroom does. It's a good perk. You know, your, your wife probably won't let you do all the things that I would probably have the kids do. So, you know, it's nice being able to have that bathroom opportunity. If someone's got to go number two and they're real little, you know, maybe cool. No adults, okay? We don't need that going on in there because we all, all don't want to smell it for the rest of the day, you see. But beside the point, the bathroom's a good addition, and I tell you what the bathroom really does for you is a massive storage tank, okay? And I'll give you a pro tip here. Take all of your life jackets and put a belt or something around all of them at once. You put them inside this bathroom area, you reach in, you grab them, you can pull them all out at once when someone needs to use the bathroom. But instead, think of all the storage. I mean, when I pile up 15 to 20 life jackets on this thing and I stick them in there, the thing is enormous. You have to separate them under like two or three different seats to make this work. But in this world, I just set them in the bathroom, close it up, and I got storage in the entire boat still. It really is great to use that bathroom on these crown lines for that. And the front, you know, there's tons of storage in the boat. It's really not even worth discussing. It's just, there's tons. It's everywhere. The Crown Line does a good job with that. But the Surf Series, if you're going to fill up the ballast bags, it does kill an awful lot of your storage. So, you know, think about that. You don't have to run the ballast system at all unless you're surfing. So if you're not a big surfer, it's still a great boat. Just don't fill up the ballast bags. The other cool perk is the uh, speakers on the outside of the boat. 
When the speakers are on the outside of the boat, you may think it looks a little funny, but if you're inside the boat and you have speakers a foot above your head, you're gonna go deaf. If you listen to loud music nonstop on the lake, it drives you nuts, because I've done it. I've actually turned my speakers on the top side of the tower on top of the bimini, because we like to listen to music while we ride, but the people inside don't wanna go deaf. So having those boats, or having those speakers outside the tower, but inside the boat where you can still pull into a slip is a very, very, very cool design. Maybe you don't like the look of it, but let me tell you, it is extremely effective and very smart to put your speakers over there, giving you all kinds of room. The other function of the crown line that I didn't see much on L. Now, don't get me wrong. All of these boats that I've looked at all had some type of a zoning. It wasn't that they didn't zone, but... I tell you what, this this wet sounds receiver they have on this crown line is genius. It has a volume up and down for zone two and a turn knob for the cockpit. So not you don't even have to click anything to try to find, oh gosh, where's this, uh, what, what screen am I on? How do I turn this down? Okay, I turn the whole thing down, but yet I want the cockpit a little bit higher because I turned it down too much for the towers. And you're always jacking with everything. This is so simple. Boom, 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 down on the tower. Boom, 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 up. Having two complete volume controls is probably how they need to be making all these boats anyway. Get all the touchscreen stuff out of here. Could you build a speaker system with a sub-volume remote, a tower volume remote, and a cockpit volume remote? Boom. Problem solved. Don't need all this crazy stuff. Just give me that, and it would serve to pretty much eliminate every problem you would ever have. Sub-volume easily would be able to fix any of the highs that you're getting out of the tower, bring in some more sub, no cockpit. Just having those three separated, bar none would not, you, you wouldn't find a better sound system if you could do that. Um, overall, the crown line, everything else is like the 240X. Really, it's a very similar boat. Um, I like the 55 because the cockpit area is much larger. Um, if you're coming from a boat from 2010 or before, those cockpit dimensions all got bigger. And what I mean by that is you got to buy a 26-foot boat now to have a 22-foot boat in 2002. That's just the way that they've built these back lounger areas. It's way bigger. So if you... One in a 22 foot boat of what it was when they didn't count the deck, you're at a 24, 25. If you want, you know, a 25 foot boat, you're up in 28, 29 foot if you want the seating capacity and the room in the cockpit as you once had. So I have a Crown Line 240 EX, and what that boat is, is a 22 foot boat but extends to 24, but it sits probably pretty darn similar to this 255 uh, surf boat, if not just a little bit bigger, if that tells you anything more space given to that back lounge area, less space inside the cockpit. So you got to get bigger with it. Um, but overall, that's the one I'm considering. I really like the cut of the boat. If you've got any suggestions or thoughts on the crown line that you want to discuss or had some questions, hey, I have looked at this stuff quite a bit, so I may have an opinion for you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. Uh, I appreciate your time.